Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started with today's video, I want to talk about a couple things real quick. First of all, I did a TEDx talk. That's right, somebody let me in front of a stage. It was pretty much fun. Actually, we ended up doing it in the shop. But if you'd like to check that TEDx talk out, there'll be a link in the description box below that you can do it. And we'd definitely be interested to see what you have to say about it. So I'll be watching the comments section of that video. Next up, I've been getting a lot of interest in the Maker's Playground signs, so we made some little versions, and these are available on my website. Again, I'll put a link in the description box below. We'd love to have your support, and if you can do that, that's great. If not, that's okay, too. We'll keep making videos. Before we get into today's video, there's just one more thing. I want to let you guys in on the secret of life and the next winning lottery numbers. Thank you very much for your time guys. I hope that was helpful and um, let's start the show. Everybody welcome back to Makers Playground HQ. I am Izzy and I have a fun one for you today. We're getting a little bit of jiggy with it. So let me set the scene for you guys. I have a friend who is a millwork installer. Picture of friend right here. And don't let her look fool you all. She will work circles around most boys I know. Now right now she's working in a hotel down somewhere in the Atlanta area and they're installing a bunch of fancy wall panels and stuff, but they needed to do some trim. So what they're doing is they're installing a wall behind the entry desk and it's some kind of fancy pants thing with a bunch of really cool panels that go in there. But they have this piece that they need to have a double miter in or a convex double miter that goes right here. So think of it like this. This piece is three quarter inches in this direction, but it's one and seven eighths deep. So it's pretty deep. And the angles here are not like a 45. So this is a one side is like a 32 and the other side is like a 58 degree angle. And they need a way to cut those with job site tools. Therein lies the problem. So when you're not in a fully equipped shop, cuts like that can be fairly tricky. So today we are going to show you how to build a simple jig to make that kind of cut relatively quickly. So this is not a job site table saw, but it's what we've got, so it's what we're going to use. Now, if you have a job site table saw and you do trim work or, you know, finish millwright work, it's a really good idea to have a small table saw sled for that table saw because you can do a lot of things with it. So what we're going to do is accessorize our table saw sled to make that cut quick and easy. So as a point of reference, I'm going to use material that I would have on a job site and the tools that I would have on a job site. I'm not going to use anything fancy. So we're going to kind of pretend like we're in the situation that they're in and we need to rig something up relatively quickly so we can get the job done. So I'm starting with a piece of scrap plywood. This is some three quarter inch plywood and I'm going to cut two lengths, you know, probably about 12 to 16 inches because I want some support for that piece that I'm cutting. And let's make it 18 inches. I'm going to cut one more piece at 18 inches that I'm going to cut down into slats. So the first thing I need to do, I'm basically making a table that's going to lift up like this. So I want to be able to put the slats like right there and I'm going to put a pivot point right there so I can lift it up which means I need to remove a little bit of material from here and here so I'm going to do that again on the table saw and then we can start putting this thing together. So we're going to assume since they're pros and they're on a job site they're using Power Pro screws, so you don't need to drill holes. Hashtag not sponsored. Wink, wink. Now this doesn't have to be super sexy. You can use a nail gun as well if you've got one already plugged in. All 
All right, so this spot we wanted to pivot. And now remember how I was just bragging on power pro screws about not needing to pre-drill, but because I am so close to the edge here, I'm pre-drilling. So what I want to do is lift this board up just a small amount so it kind of offers a little bit of free space under there. I don't want it sitting tight. I just want it up a little bit so I can make a nice little pivot spot there that this will easily move up and down. So in any way, you can use any number of things to create that spot there. Um, in this case, if I had change, I would use a couple of quarters, but I don't. But since I don't have any quarters in my pocket, I'm just gonna use a couple of washers. You could use cards, business cards, folded pieces of paper, a chunk of cardboard, any one of those things, as long as it keeps you fairly consistent across the surface of the material, like this. So you'd want to mark back it. So this is three quarters of an inch wide and I want a central pivot point. So I would mark three eighths inches down and I would mark three inches down here and three eighths inch over. Um, but I'm just going to guess. Same on the other side. and then run a couple of screws into those positions. Now, if you wanted to make this for your shop and you wanted to get super fancy, you could do that. Um, but like I said, we're pretending like we're on a job site and we need to get this done in a hurry. Two final pieces of this puzzle. Make sure it moves up and down freely. It does, yay. So now we need some way to hold it up in its position once we find an angle. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. The simplest way is to just put a piece here and a piece here, um, or just to put a piece loosely on the back that you can screw in here or you know whatever position you want it in. And I think that's the route we're gonna go. So you just wanna put a, a loose screw in the back of here doesn't have to be super tight. If I can, you know, do this without it coming flying out of my hand. So to keep it loose, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the piece before I do that. Make sure it's flush with the board. And that's probably a little bit more than that. So that way it's loose and I can move it to wherever I need it and run a screw in there and hold it in position. Now once this is fairly stable, so once that screw is in position, that'll hold that where it needs to be. Now the last thing I need is a fence along here. If you go ahead, I can either go that way or that way. Uh, that way I can clamp a board onto that fence. So um, for, for argument's sake, or just to get this done quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and screw one right down there. Now you notice I'm, these are inch and a half screws, a three quarter, three quarter, which aren't really three quarter and three quarter. So I'm going at a bit of an angle so that piece doesn't pierce. And I'll do the same here. And now we can still move this up and down. So what I need to do now is cut a piece of material that we can cut one of those little uh, double convex uh, miters on. Let's do that next. So all I have is some um, 15 16 alder in the shop that I can cut down to use for this, to do this demonstration. So we're gonna plane it down real quick. So this is completely unnecessary planer shot to throw in the video just so I can show off my new quick lock system that we'll have out on the market in a few weeks. Over here. As long as we're showing off our quick lock system, let me show you another accessory we're doing right here. Check this out. So you all know how what a pain these are. Not anymore. And these lock in place. Once they're in, they're really, 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 really sturdy. I'll have more content and videos coming out about that stuff soon. Let's get to playing it. Okay, so what's really cool about this jig is it gets rid of all of the math for you. As long as you know one angle, and let's say the angle we want is that 32 degree angle, we mark that on our board, 
Oops. Let me do it right here. So I've marked 32 on here, and if I move that up here, that's gonna be a 58 degree angle. Dink, dink, dink. Because that is what's left over with 90. So I'm taking 32, subtracting that from 90, I get 38. So the, how, the way we set up the jig is we're gonna find our center mark here. Freak. So we know that's our center mark-ish. <clears throat> it's close. <laughs> and then we take our, the jig we just made and we throw that on a flat surface. And this over here, and we find our line. Let me, let me move this where you can actually see what I'm up to. All right, so now what I wanna do is take that line right there and I wanna put it on a flat surface and then I wanna bring that up to a piece like this that tells me, hey, I am, I am right at that line right like that then i'll mark it here and put my screw in now because this is just screwed together and i don't have a really good way of controlling that i'm just going to take a piece of material and shove it back in there that way i can take my time and make sure that i've got my line exactly where it needs to be now if you look back here in order to adjust that i just move this block in like that until i get exactly where i want to be Doot. That's it right there. So before I do anything, let's mark a line here so I don't uh, lose my place in case my board drops. And then I'm gonna come back over here and add my second screw. And now we have now we have a sled with that angle. So let's take this over to the saw. So the first thing I'm gonna do is raise my blade so it trims everything off right here so I have a really good defined spot. I'm gonna cut that extra bit off with my Suzanne saw. And if you don't have one of these on a job site, you might wanna ask yourself, why don't I have one on a job site? Because they're super handy in lots of weird places. All right, we're getting there. So now, if you're, this is like really hard because we're in this little weird area. So I'm gonna bring this line to my center, to my center mark right there. So that's the, the line that we're gonna take off. There's our center mark. And then I'm gonna throw a clamp on this. I'm gonna bring my blade down so I'm not cutting all the way through the material. A couple ways you can do this is you can put a mark right where your center line is right there on the, on the jig, bring it over to your blade and then raise the blade up to that line. Or you can do what I'm about to do and just raise the blade slowly in little increments till you get where you're happy with it. Okay, so now that I'm happy with where the line is, I'm simply just gonna move this over by about a 16th of an increment. And repeat that process. You can tell I need to bring my blade up just a little bit more, but y'all are getting to starting to see the idea here. So this is a perfect 90 degree angle and I only had to do the math for one side and now it sits just like it's supposed to. All right, so now that I've got this and I want the inverse of this on this end, I can still do, I can still use this jig right here. What I'm gonna start by doing is finding my center point and let's say I'm gonna measure from this point right here to the center point of wherever I want that measurement to end. So this is how I will measure the length of this material. So now I'm gonna bring that up to basically where the saw is gonna come through and it's gonna cut this off at that angle. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and raise the saw blade up so it'll cut, it'll cut through most of that. And if you needed this to be a little bit lower, you could make it out a half inch so you're not quite so high above there. It's probably a, a caveat that should be added. Now I need, to bring sure, I need to make sure my blade is back down to the same position it was before. So to do that, I'm just gonna flip, I'm just gonna flip the material back over and bring it down to the, to the blade, lifts, let it back down. So I'm transferring that center line right onto the material here. I'm gonna bring that down to the table saw blade height. Right there, throw my clamp back on and start the cuts over. And now you have the inverse of that cut. So I hope that made sense to you on the on the back cut. The front cut's easy, or the um, the convex angles are easy. The concave, or the concave, the con. I've been saying convex. That's a concave. Concave angles are easy. The convex ones take a little bit of figuring out, but it, it works. So uh, if you're ever in a situation where you need to do that, you're on a job site, you don't have your bandsaw, you don't, you're not setting up in a full equip shop. That's a really easy way to do it. All you need is a table saw sled and a jig that you can build in probably five minutes if you're not recording a video. And uh, you can like be the rock star on the job site for that day. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense to you guys. And um, I'll, I guess I'll see you in the next, oh wait, I'm supposed to say subscribe and thumbs up. You know what I'm talking about. See you guys in the next video.